Hi and welcome to this tutorial. The last tutorial was about writing an advice. So we wrote an advice method inside an aspect and we used aspect oriented programming to actually call this um, advice code whenever a particular target method is run. So this is a very simple uh, advice and a very simple configuration here. We have a before annotation that tells uh, before which method this advice has to run. So we used this particular string in order to configure that method which we are interested in, the target method. Now we ended the tutorial with one particular problem that uh, I showed you. Um, we have used this before annotation to make this advice run before a public string git name is called. We originally intended this advice to be called before the get name of the circle class is called. But now what, what's happening is, since we have not made any mention of the circle class over here, uh, it's this advice is running for every call to every public string get name, no matter where it is. Even if it's in the triangle class, you know, in the triangle we have a public string get name. So even when this method is called, our uh, advice is called. So this is one problem that we'll try to correct. We want to make this advice run only for a git name of a circle. And uh, this is one of the things we'll look at other ways in which we can uh, configure this particular uh, definition of the target method. So in order to restrict this to a particular class or a particular object, what we need to do is we need to provide information about that class in this string. So we know that we want this advice to get executed before the execution of this method. So in order to make this restrictive to a particular class, what we need to do is we need to give the class name over here. So since I want this advice to run before a get name of a circle class, all I need to do is before the get name method that I'm writing here, I need to write the name of the circle class with the package name. So this would be org .koshik .java brains model circle name. So all I'm doing is I'm specifying the class for which this get name method belongs to so that I can give more information to Spring about which uh, git name I'm actually interested in. So now that I have specified this, Spring is going to look for this particular pattern and it's going to match only if a git name of the circle class with this particular package is executed. So if a git name with the same uh, signature public string git name of another class is executed, like a triangle here, this will not run. So let's quickly test that out. We'll save this. And uh, now let's run this class. Now I'm calling shape service dot get circle dot get name. Now this advice has to run. So here you see circle name is printed, but the advice is run. So now if I change this to a triangle, now if I'm running the get name for a triangle, ideally the advice should not run. And it does not. It just prints a triangle name, but here, uh, even though the get name is run, the advice is not kicking in and executing this. So this is the way we can restrict the method. And uh, you know the advice can be applied only to particular methods that we are actually interested in. Okay, so now that we've uh, covered how we can restrict this, I'm going to show you two different ways in which we can configure this. Now, the two scenarios that I'm going to show you is what if you want one particular advice to be applied to different methods. Uh, after all, that's the point of an advice, isn't it? We talked about cross-cutting concerns and how one piece of code that applies across different points in the execution of your code needs to be isolated out. So now that I've isolated a cross-cutting concern, I need to be able to apply this cross-cutting concern across different points. And uh, we look at a way to do that and the second thing that I'm going to show you is the uh, the other way. Now, say I have one particular point in the execution of my code where I want different advice methods to get executed. Now, how would I do that? So these two things are something that we'll cover in this tutorial. So let's look at the first thing. One advice applied to different points 
in the execution. The way to do that is, of course, you can replicate this. Say you want uh, another method. Say you want to apply this for uh, the triangle. You can just replicate this, write another method, and then uh, apply this, just change this to triangle. Then that would work. But then you are, again, uh, you know, duplicating the code. So the way to do this is by using wildcards. Now, we saw one way we actually did it. I mean, we, did, we didn't intend to do it, but it actually happened. Now, this applied it to all methods of uh, the code which have a public string get name as a signature. So this is actually what uh, actually happened. We didn't intend for that to happen, but we did implement an advice method across different points in the execution. So as long as different points in the execution of the code have a public string get name, one advice can be applied to different uh, methods in your code. Now, there are other ways in which we can configure it. Now, let's say I want this advice to be applied to all getters in the code, no matter where they are. Uh, we have a get name here, right? So I have a get name for a circle and I have a get name for a triangle. So this expression is going to apply this advice to all public string get names. But let's say I want this advice to be applied to all getters, whether it's a get name or a get uh, anything else. I want this advice to be applied. So notice here in the shape service, I have a get circle and I have a get triangle. Now let's say I want this advice to be applied to those as well. So the way I can do that is by using a wildcard. Now instead of specifying a get name over here, what I'll do is I'll say get star. So what I'm saying here is get anything. So whatever uh, be the method that starts with a get and then it has a public string, I want this to be applied. So this would work for all getters that return a string. But notice here in the shape service, I'm not returning a string. So a get triangle is returning a triangle and a get circle is returning a circle. So what I'll do is I'll remove the string and I'll add an, a star over here as well. So this is another wildcard. So no matter any method, if as long as it starts with a get and it uh, no matter what it returns, I'm putting a star here. So irrespective of the return type, as long as a method it is a public method and it starts with the words G, with the letters G, E, T, uh, I want this advice to be applied. So this is uh, the same expression, but I've used wildcards here so I can apply this advice across different points. Now let's save this and see what happens. Now the, ideally what should happen is this uh, get star should apply to a get circle, get name. So it'll happen twice in my uh, AOP. Get triangle, let me change this to a circle. And save this. So now the get circle will trigger the first call to this aspect. So it is a public, irrespective of the return type, the method starts with GET. So the first call is triggered and then a get name is called. Now, again, this satisfies this expression. It's a public, irrespective of the return type, the method starts with GET. So again, it's going to get called. So now this single line of code, a shape service dot get circle dot get name is going to return in two calls to this logging advice. Now let's see that in action. There you see you have two calls. So the first call is for the get circle. The second call is for the get name. Now, even if I change this to a triangle, it's going to re result in the same output because we have not specified the class. All we are saying is any getter, irrespective of the return type, just make sure this advice is called. So we have two getters that are called here, a get triangle and a get name. So again, this is going to result in two calls to the advice. So you can use different permutations and combinations. Say you want, you don't, you do not want to specify the, uh, you know, the whether it's a public or a private, you can just remove this. So what we are seeing is any return type, as long as it has a GED uh, as the first three letters of the method execute this logging advice. So there are different ways in which we can specify these wildcards. Um, you can specify a wildcard 
here as well. So what we did earlier was, without this wildcard, what we're saying is this method should not take any parameters. There are no arguments to this method. So that's what we have denoted here by not specifying anything over here. But now let's say you have a getter method which takes in an argument and uh, you want this advice to be applied for that as well. Then what you do is you specify a wildcard over here. So that would mean that as long as there is an argument, some, some argument, then it's going to get applied for all getters that have some argument. Now, if you want this advice to be applied for all getters, irrespective of whether they have arguments or not, then what you do is you add a dot dot over here. So a dot dot here means that it can be zero arguments or it can be any number of arguments. It's going to match this and the logging advice is called. So in summary, what we do is you specify star or the asterisk for any any wildcard that you want to apply for either the return type or the method name. And as far as the parameters are concerned, you apply the dot dot expression for any match of you know zero or more arguments and you apply a star for one or more arguments and if you remove this, you just have open close. That means that you're matching for zero arguments. So this is uh, this gives you a lot of flexibility. Actually, you can uh, mix and match this to catch a lot of uh, signatures and specifically apply for uh, the, you know the points that you are actually interested in. So this is the way in which you can apply single advice methods to different points in the execution of your code. And of course, you can uh, use the you know, the package name to get more control. So you can, let's say I have org dot Kaushik dot Java brains dot model dot star dot get star. So what I'm doing is I'm saying all classes inside this model package, then uh, a method that starts with a get. So you can, you can mix and match this. So you can, uh, you know, get complete control over what methods you're actually interested in and for what methods this advice has to apply. Okay, so now let me remove this. Okay, so now we've looked at ways in which we can apply a single advice to multiple points in the execution. Now, what if, uh, you know, we are looking at the other way. Now you have one point in the execution of your code and you want multiple pieces of advice to get executed. Uh, one way we can do this is again by using different uh, methods and repeating this expression. Now let's say for all getters, I want a logging advice to get executed and I want one more advice to get executed. Let me add that. Public void, let's say second advice. So I'll again print something out. Second advice executed. Now I want these two advice methods to get executed on all getters. So it's very simple. All I need to do is I need to copy this and paste this here, right? So it's going to happen. Uh, both these methods are going to get executed for all the execution of all the methods that match these patterns. But uh, if you have a lot of methods like this, you will be repeating this expression. Now, this is a very simple expression, but uh, let's say it's, it's fairly complex. You have specified the package name, the return type, and the whole lot of uh, configuration. Uh, if, you have, uh, if you have a lot of uh, methods, a lot of advice methods, then you will have to repeat this expression, and you have to repeat this before annotation for all those methods. Now, there is a shortcut for this. Now, the way you can do this is by defining what are called as point cuts. Point cut is a AOP terminology again for all the points in the execution of your code where you want this advice method to cut in. So the point where you want the method to cut in is a point cut. So this star get star of no arguments is a point cut for second advice. The same way this is a point cut for the logging advice. So what we can do is, since you have the same point cut that are being used by 
two different advice methods. What you can do is you can define a point cut separately and uh, put this expression over here. And then when you're configuring your advice, you just say, hey, I have already defined a point cut over there. So that's where you want uh, this advice to run. And again, for the same thing, you can just refer to that point cut. And then that point cut will have this expression. You don't have to put this expression on all your advice methods. So let's do that now. I'll uh, define a point cut by using the at point cut annotation. The add point cut annotation takes an expression, it's same as the before. It takes an expression about where uh, the actual point cut needs to take place. So I'll just copy this and paste this over here. So this is, uh, it's a simple point cut that says on all execution of all getters, this point cut needs to be applied. Now I can't just leave an annotation like this. The annotation has to annotate something. So what I'll do is I'll write a method over here. I'll say all getters. Now this is a dummy method. All getters is a dummy method. It does not have any uh, code inside it. But what this does is it holds a point cut expression. Let me see here, this point cut is applied to all getters. Now that I have defined this point cut over here, I don't have to use this expression everywhere I want an advice to get applied. So I have this expression over here and over here, logging advice and second advice. I don't have to put this expression over here. All I need to do is I need to say before this all getters. What I'm saying is, hey, I already have defined this point cut expression over here. So that's what I want this advice to use. So all I do is I'll change this expression to all getters. And even for this advice. So this advice, you know, is uh, annotated with before of all getters. So all that it does is it checks for uh, the all getters method and it takes this expression and uh, the same thing for the second advice. So this saves you typing as well as uh, make sure that you type your expression only once and then you can use that expression across different points. So let's let's run this now and see what happens. So here you see this, uh, both these advices are executing twice. So this is for, the first one is for the get triangle. The second one is for the get name. And uh, that's happening because it's running for all getters. Now the all getters has the pattern that matches for the getters and now I do not have to use the pattern for each and every advice. I just refer to this method which has the point cut expression. So this is the way in which you can use uh, a particular expression and match multiple advice methods. So, uh, so we have looked at two ways in which you can configure uh, point cut expressions. One is if you want the same advice to get applied to different points and different point cuts, then all you do is you use uh, wildcards or you write your expression so that it matches different points. And then uh, the second thing, if you want one particular point cut expression to get applied to different advice methods, what you, what you do is you use a point cut annotation and then annotate a dummy method. And then you can use a dummy method as a reference for all your before annotations so that no matter how many advice methods you have, those advice methods will point to this point cut expression and then it's going to apply just like you, it's almost as if you have used this expression in each of your advice methods. Only thing is you're just referring to one consolidated place in which you have your point cut expression.